All right. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Lehigh Valley. I'm Anthony Young. I'm here to get you started today. So we're going to start out with a song. Why are we here? Well, hopefully <laughs> this song will tell us. We are here for the greater good of all. Please join me as we sing. Thank you for joining us. We are delighted to have you here today. And we're going to take a moment just to stop, just to cleanse ourselves, put ourselves together new. And we're just going to be prepared and prepare our hearts, our spirits, our minds, our bodies as we move forward into this moment, into this day, into this service, into this connection with each other and with the universe and with God. I'm going to ask you to join me in an opening prayer. Let us pray. Come relax in the presence of God. Come fully present. Have no distraction. Do not be elsewhere. Be here in this moment as we give and receive. I release any even belief in limitations. I renew my sense of possibility. I release the habit of judging others. I renew my commitment to see the divine in all beings. I release doubt and indecision. I renew my divine power of wisdom. I release negative thinking. I renew my positive expectations. I release discontent. I renew my gratitude in all things. I release apathy. I renew zeal and enthusiasm. I release the fear of lack. I renew my awareness of abundance. I release any sense of worry. I renew my faith in divine order. I release thoughts of competition. I re renew my willingness to cooperate. I release any need to complain. I renew my outlook through appreciation. I release old feelings of possible bitterness. I renew inner peace by forgiving. I release thoughts of illness. I renew my openness to the healing power of spirit. I release anger. I renew my patience. I release any sense of discouragement. I renew my hope with the power of affirmative prayer. I release my darkest fears. I renew the strength and courage of my heart. I release feelings of loneliness. I renew my connection with spirit, self, and with others. 
I release and I renew. I do this now. I do this with declaration. I do this in affirmation of my oneness with spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And now we're going to do something a little bit brighter, hopefully. We're going to sing our opening song, which is called, as soon as I find it, there we are, Swing Wide the Doors. Are you ready? We've released, we've renewed, and now we're going to open up, Swing Wide the Doors. The time is right. Swing wide the doors, the time is right. Swing wide the doors to let in the light. Bring in the dawn for humankind. Swing wide the doors of this heart of mine. I'm not holding it in anymore. I'm gonna shout it out loud. I understand now what I'm here for and what this life is about. It's about love, it's about laughter, it's about comfort and smiles. It's about love, it's about kindness, it's about hearts open wide. It's about love, it's about passion, it's about taking a chance. It's about love, it's about service, it's about lending a hand, about lending a hand. Swing wide the doors, the time is right. Swing wide the doors to let in the light. Bring in the dawn for humankind. Swing wide the doors of this heart of mine. There's a voice that I've heard for years. I learned to keep it inside. Well, now it's coming in loud and clear. I want a deeper life. It's about love, it's about laughter, it's about comfort and smiles. It's about love, it's about kindness, it's about hearts open wide. It's about love, it's about passion, it's about taking a chance. It's about love, it's about service, it's about lending a hand, about lending a hand. Swing wide the doors, the time is right. Swing wide the doors to let in the light. Bring in the dawn for humankind. Swing wide the doors of this heart of mine. Swing wide the doors of this heart of mine. Okay. Joe. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Lehigh Valley. My name is Joe, and I am delighted to be assisting Charlie Tweet and Anthony Young this morning. We are grateful Spirit has led you here through Facebook Live and also live in our sanctuary. As a reminder, we are open to the public now, so if you feel comfortable enough, please join us on any Sunday right here in the sanctuary. But our live streaming will also continue. Here are our statements of affirmation. Our, our affirmative statements express our unity de denominational statement of belief, as well as the vision and mission of unity of Lehigh Valley. As I introduce each of our affirmative statements, I invite you to consider joining me in speaking this statement aloud. We hope you also share in the vision and mission for this ministry, what unity believes. There is only one presence, one power, one activity in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotence. The vision unity of Lehigh Valley holds for the world. We co-create an awakened world of peace, harmony, and abundance. The mission that is ours to do. United in love, we provide a positive environment for all people to discover and express their spiritual nature. Thank you. 
Now I will read the daily word for today, May 9th, motherly love. I give thanks for motherly love. God's love expressing through my mother gave me life. God's love, wisdom, and strength guided her and all those who nurtured me as I grew. My words of praise and gratitude let me show my mother how much I appreciate her. When I wish to demonstrate my appreciation for my mother's example, I share the nurturing uh, motherly love of God in my words and actions with all people. Remembering the times when my mother or another compassionate person listened patiently and shared encouraging words, I seek to be a caring and supportive presence. Recalling my mother's joy each time I learned something new, I share my skills and knowledge willingly when someone seeks my help. In gratitude, I share the gift of nurturing love. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Isaiah 66, 13. All right. Thank you very much, Joe. We're going to ask you to join us in one more song. This is called There Is Only Love. Hopefully you've been enjoying the music today. And now we're going to bring you some extra great music here. We are blessed to have with us uh, one of the positive music uh, artists that's coming to us via Zoom. And we are delighted to have him with us. He's blessed us before and blesses us again. And we are looking forward to the blessing we will receive from him today. Please welcome Charlie Tweet. Hey, good morning, everyone. Charlie Thweet here, and uh, it's nice to know that some of you are actually in the sanctuary, so I guess I'll wave down to you down there. And uh, I want to start my little segment here with a, uh, we'll do a little music going into meditation. And I'll invite you to sing, add your voice. And as the song fades down into silence, we'll just take a moment in that silence and feel what we've been singing about. Now today's uh, theme I'll be speaking on is compassion. So this song, uh, the words are, I am in you, and then we'll sing, you are in me. And this is really a way of reminding ourselves how connected we are, and that will engender compassion too, doesn't it? So 
Anyway, after we have a little silence, I'll lead a little guided meditation after that. So let's close our eyes and uh, let's move into that place of compassion in our hearts.
Just take a deep breath. You feel this awareness. You are in me. And I am in you. We are one. spirit. We are one as a creation, a single creation of God. A single creation. And with every breath, with every step, I move toward truly knowing that. are here at this church because it's called unity. Unity. One single creation of God. I am in you. You are in me. truth, compassion is natural, that kindness to each other, that empathy, living as one, let's all take a breath into that. the single creation of God and you are too. Thank you God that we are ever increasingly aware and waking up to this truth. Our oneness is not just a nice thought. It's who we are. Every time we meet a friend, we see that more and more in their eyes. You are in me, and I am in you. breath in. Let this be a, the truth of our lives as we keep opening and opening to this truth.
for us to be awake to knowing it. Well, it's nice to be back here, and it's fun to know some of you really are in the sanctuary. So, hello, sanctuary people. Hello, home people. Um, I want uh, to, again, remind you my talk today is on compassion. I'm calling it The Heart of Compassion. And the subtitle is Everyone's Carrying Something. So, The Heart of Compassion, Everyone's Carrying Something something. So you may have noticed if you've heard me speak before, I like to open with a joke. So I have a, a new joke for you. And this involves a little bit of compassion too. So this happens at a shopping mall. And there's an old man kind of wandering around lost and, and uh, he can't find his wife. And finally, he just he, you know, pulls aside uh, this beautiful young woman and says, Excuse me, miss, uh, would you mind just staying with me for a few minutes? I can't seem to find my wife. And and the young woman just feels this compassion in her heart for this old man. And, and she says, well, yes, well, when, when was the last time you saw her? Do you, do, you, do you know where she is? And he says, well, no, but what I've noticed is that every time I start speaking with a beautiful young woman, she shows up out of nowhere. <laughs> so anyway, just a little joke to start your day. So I uh, want to wish Happy Mother's Day to everyone. And... Uh, so uh, what a beautiful day, and I know notice the last song ended with like a baby knows its way home. And I think for all of us, that place in our heart knows that way home. That's a great representation of our connection with the divine and what, what true home is. So uh, thank you to all the mothers in the world. Thank you to my mom, who's in the heaven world, and uh, to everyone, my sisters, et cetera, all of you who are mothers, and all the people who have taken the motherly role. You know, it's not just about... <laughs> that group, but, you know, so many more people have done the mothering, so we honor all of that. Okay, well, one of the things I'm, I want to include in this talk, there's a song I wrote a while back, and uh, the, uh, there's a lyric in it that says, the light inside of me is me. You know, sometimes we, we, th we, we think, well, there's this light inside of me, but what if we remember that that is actually who we are? So I'm going to use that as kind of a foundation for some of what I talk about today. So um, the, uh, there are three areas I want to look at in today's talk, and one is compassion for self, and then later we'll look at compassion for others, and then finally, compassion for humanity. 
So let's look at compassion for self. And there's a great quote. The Buddha said, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. I'll say that again. If your passion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. And when I think about that, well, first of all, it's really true because, you know, we just in the meditation talked about how we are all in this one creation of God. So how could you leave yourself out? But another, another thing that sometimes we miss, remember the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. Sometimes we forget the as yourself part. You know, yourself is included in that thought, in that, uh, in that invitation. Love your neighbor as yourself. So remember in that, that we're loving ourselves. And you know, this is not selfish. This is just self-aware and self-loving. So again, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. And I, I know we've all had experiences where we've gotten to learn that lesson and, and see that. Uh, one, one story I'll tell about myself is um, when uh, my son was born, and this is now 32 plus years ago. And uh, at the time, um, you know, went through the whole pregnancy and, you know, rubbing the belly and talking to my child inside, you know, not knowing if, if it's a boy or a girl yet. And, and then came the day of the birth and, and we had a midwife and we had, a, uh, had rented a hot tub that we brought to our home and, and this, you know, portable water heater. So this was going to be a wonderful, luxurious, very um, holistic home birth and water. Well, it turns out it didn't work that way. And, uh, and after 17 hours of difficult labor and no pro nothing progressing, the midwife finally said, you know, I think we need to do this at the hospital. It feels like this isn't uh, gonna work anymore. So let's just uh, recommend you go to the hospital. So we did, we got in the car, got there in about 30 minutes. Uh, she got uh, on the fetal monitor and an IV and suddenly things progressed, I think, I don't know if it's just the sense of safety or maybe we weren't midwife hot tub people. I don't know. So, and uh, so it progressed and then came the time of the birth and I was in there in the delivery room. But the thing is they made me wear this gown and this mask and this is before we were all wearing masks. And, you know, I started to feel very claustrophobic and I couldn't really get oxygen and, um, and I, I overheat eat more easily than most people. And before long I was starting to feel queasy and then things got even more interesting when things began to happen. I got even queasier uh, as things progressed. And I, I had to leave the room because I was about to faint. And when I was gone, my son was born. I missed, after, after nine months of pregnancy and all of that leading up to it, and that moment I was looking so forward to, and I missed it. And I, a friend happened to be there, and she was in the other room, you know, putting a, a cold cloth on my forehead and reviving me. and. She eventually put me in a wheelchair and rolled me into the delivery room, and uh, and I missed it, and it hurt. I did get to hold my son right away. The, the nurse handed him to me in these swaddling clothes, like, oh my God, this beautiful baby. Unbelievable moment. And yet I'd missed the thing I'd been waiting for, and a part of me has had a wound around that uh, ever since. Like, I missed the birth. I missed it. and. And this is where the compassion for self comes in. Can I just kind of hold myself like a, a father would hold his child and just let it be okay and just say, it's okay, Charlie, it's okay. Just, you know, have compassion for that part that hurts and just to hold it, hold it in love. And so is that hard for us to do sometimes? Do I feel like I've completely accomplished it? No, but it's a place I can go and, and hold myself. So that's a story about my son. I, I have another story about my father that happened recently. And uh, he's 91 years old, lives in California. I live on the East Coast. And I haven't seen him in person for over a year because of this pandemic thing. And, uh, and it hurts. And, and a short while ago, I found myself in tears, un inconsolable. I couldn't stop crying from missing just getting to be with him because usually, I would see him about every month, every six weeks. So I'd make a point to get through and spend time. And I could not stop crying. And I felt like a little six-year-old boy who needed his daddy and just could not, could not get out of that loop of the tears and the pain. And, and again, it's just an invitation to just to feel myself in that. In a way, it was almost delicious. Have you ever had that where the pain is almost delicious? Like you just want to 
really go there all the way. And I did. I just let myself be in it. And I, I, I could also see myself from, from above, in a way, just to hold, you know, look at myself objectively and hold myself in compassion, uh, again, like a, a mother or a father would hold their child. So compassion for self. You know, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. So that's compassion for self. Let's look at compassion for others. You know, Mark Twain has a great quote, and it's about kindness. I'm going to equate kindness and compassion. So, but he says, kindness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Isn't that beautiful? Kindness, kindness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. And Plato has a quote. He said, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a harder battle. Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a harder battle. And that's really p why I have the subtitle, uh, 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 Everyone's Carrying Something, to this talk. Everyone's Carrying Something. And that's a phrase that just came to me a year or two ago, just that awareness. You know, a lot of people are smiling on the outside, but there's stuff going on on the inside. They're just trying to get through their day, and we don't necessarily know it. So why, don't, why not meet everyone with this awareness of the possibility that everyone needs compassion? We may not see what their battle is, but how can we meet everyone with that, with that place in our heart that and hold them in compassion? Because we don't know. We don't know. They're doing the best they can. And I, I have a story how that came up in my life. You know, I've, many of you know that I've uh, led tours to Italy for about 10 years. I can't say I've led one recently, but I look forward to going back to that. And, and there was a, a tour group I had about five years ago where one of the people on the, on the group was just more difficult than usual. And I'm, I'm not going to use her real name. Let's say her name is Mary. And uh, Mary had this habit, you know, we'd, we'd say we're going to meet in the lobby of the hotel at 10 to go to the museum. And consistently, day after day, Mary would be 10 or 15 minutes late and... We just couldn't seem to get her in line. And after three days or so, her roommate said, I can't do this anymore. You know, she, there are other issues and I need to switch roommates. And for a while, nobody wanted a room with Mary, but finally someone volunteered and it worked out well enough. So, so uh, the trip went on and it was these struggles with Mary. And finally, uh, we finished in Venice after 13 days together. And then we, got, we all got to the train station and people started going their separate ways back to the airport or some people were continuing on to see a little bit more of Italy. So finally, uh, the last group I was with was uh, with Mary and then this couple named Susie and Eric. And so Eric and Susie uh, got on, they were getting on the train at the station to head off to Milan and they're gonna do three more days in Milan. And so Mary and I got on the train just to kind of give them hugs and say goodbye and and tell me we're going to leap off before the train headed out. And uh, so it was two minutes before the train was leaving. And I, I said, so Mary, we should get off because the train's going to depart. And she said, oh, I'll just stand another minute. I'll be right out. And so, okay, I left. I went and stood on the platform, waited for her. Another minute passes. I get on, hey, Mary, you really got to go. It's just leaving, leaving in a minute. And she said, I'll be right there. She keeps hugging. She can't stop talking. Another minute goes by and the train doors, shh clothes and off goes the train down the tracks with Mary still on board and it's like <laughs> okay and again I guess she thinks that the the train system will stop for her schedule just like she would be late to the lobby so anyway there she goes down the tracks and I have to laugh it's like somehow her karma caught up with her but a minute or two later I get a text from Eric and he says well as you may have noticed Mary is still on the train uh, but she just talked with the conductor, and he said she can get off in 15 minutes, get another train, come back. So would you be willing to wait for her? And I did, because we had plans. I was going to help her get some train tickets for her next trip. And uh, so anyway, she finally comes back, gets off the, the train, and, and we both had a good laugh. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't get into uh, condemnation or anything like that. I just kind of, you know, she's doing the best she can. I just held her in compassion. We had a good laugh. I helped her with the train tickets and we went on our merry way. Now, recently a friend of mine said, you know, in life there are really only two choices to any situation. There's compassion or condemnation. Compassion or condemnation. And which one are you choosing? You know, whatever we choose, that's the, that's the energy we get to live in. 
So why not choose compassion? Everyone's doing the best they can. It may not look like it. It may not fit your idea. But why, why not meet with compassion and just live in a world where, where we can kind of hold others uh, in that light? You know, I had another experience. There's a neighbor across the street uh, with two neighbors, Barbara and Frank. And they, um, uh, Frank had a stroke about uh, two years ago. And so now he's in a wheelchair. And I got a call uh, from Barbara and she said, hey, Charlie, can you run, come across the street real quick? Frank fell out of his wheelchair. I can't lift him. So I ran across the street, you know, put my mask on, they had their masks on and helped lift him up and get him in the wheelchair and just happy to help and, and then came back home. And, and uh, you know, just any chance to just hold people and to help. And, and really, I just want to say compassion is not pity. Compassion is just, you know, giving love and holding people in that light. You know, the light inside of me is me. And we meet that light in each other. Now, I looked up the definition of compassion because so I thought it would be interesting, and I'm going to just read you what it said. It says, compassion is sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with the desire to alleviate it. To alleviate it. The sympathetic consciousness of, of another person's distress together with the desire to alleviate it. So it's just being conscious of their distress and wanting to help. That's what compassion is. So... Um, Okay, so that's compassion for others. And finally, compassion for humanity. Um, and I want to read a story that, uh, that someone gave me. And I, I think this is a beautiful example of compassion for humanity. So this is just a quick, uh, long paragraph, okay? So a teacher friend of mine was teaching math to a class of six-year-olds. And many of them were recently arrived refugees from other countries. The math topic was fractions. My friend defined what a half and a quarter were. Then she asked the children to write down whether they would prefer a half or a quarter of a chocolate bar. As she walked around the room, she noticed that some of the new students wrote that they would prefer a quarter of the chocolate bar. My friend thought she was going to have to reteach the lesson because they didn't appear to understand that half was bigger than a quarter of the chocolate bar. And so she asked one of the students, why would they prefer a quarter of a chocolate bar? And one little girl replied, so that more people could have a piece of chocolate. And isn't that a beautiful story about the, national, the natural kindness and compassion of these kids? Isn't that beautiful? So more people could have chocolate. You know, she's tuned into that compassion, that oneness, that openness. Now, you know, I'm, this is about uh, compassion for humanity, and this what a perfect time to be looking at this and this global health crisis we're going through. You know, there's, we're all in the same boat, aren't we? So in some ways, it's easy to empathize. You know, we're all, and, and in a way, this is really, you may, remember uh, the movies back in the 50s, these black and white movies where, where when there was an alien invader from another planet, suddenly the Earth finally got together in unity and, and to meet uh, a mission together, you know, to get together in one uh, uni unified cause. Well, in a way, that's what we're doing now. And it's a great opportunity to step into compassion for all of the countries and all the people, because we get it. We get it, don't we? Now, there's another opportunity, and that's on a national level. Have you noticed that our politics have gotten kind of polarized lately? Can you step into compassion for people who may not, you know, think the way you think? They might be on the opposite side of politics to you, but can you hold them in compassion, with respect? Can you hold them in light? You know, because we are, we are a unified creation of God, aren't we? We are a single creation together. And in this oneness, I am in you, you are in me. The light inside of me is me, and the light inside of them is that same essence. Can we even remember to be compassionate for people we don't agree with in big ways? You know, I've, and I've, in this political landscape, we've seen a lot of, you know, online people making fun of the other side. Do you think that's really helping? I don't think it is. You know, if we're talking about unity and oneness, I don't think that, that, that was really getting lost in this illusion of duality, this illusion that we're separate. Can we come back to that awareness? Even when it's tempting, it's tempting to, you know, make fun of the other side. So uh, Thomas Merton, he was a great American mystic. And he had a quote I want to I share with you. He said, Compassion 
is the keen awareness of the interdependence of all things. Compassion is a keen awareness of the interdependence of all things. So let's live knowing that we're interdependent. And, you know, we, sometimes we have to set the tone. You know, the, the peace song, and let it begin with me. Does the peace song say, well, I'll wait until the other side does it? No. <laughs> does it say, wait until someone? No. Let it begin with me. Can we just come from that consciousness, that awareness, that mindset? The Dalai Lama has a great quote I found. He said, love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. It's true. We need to step into this oneness and actual action, not just nice thoughts on Sundays. How can we do that? Well, I want to start to close. And, and as, as I was thinking about all this, I also I thought, what is the ultimate expression of compassion? You know, even when you feel burdened and attacked, you can muster up, can you muster up some compassion? Can you express your heart's love even when you're under stress? And this example came to me. There was an example of one man. He was being attacked. He was being whipped and even executed. And even when he was, when all of this was happening to him, do you know what he said? He said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Isn't that a beautiful example of compassion? Even in the worst situation you can imagine, he's able to step back and see even they are doing the best they can from what they know. Forgive them. They know not what they do. He held them in the most beautiful, pure compassion. Kindness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Everyone is carrying something. Thank you. May you live a compassionate week and life. I'm going to close with one more song. And this is a song that, that I haven't uh, actually recorded yet, but I, I dug it up out of the archives. I thought it would be fun to share with you. And uh, this song is called I Can Feel It. So um, let me get the key right here. So I thought I'd pick some, something kind of up-tempo. If you want to dance around the sanctuary, please do. I can feel it in my bones and I can feel it in my heart. I can feel it in your eyes as we go flying through the stars. I can feel it in this light that's always shining out of me. Now I see, now I see. It's been great being with you, and I look forward to the next time. Many blessings.
Thank you, Charlie. That was great. Now is a time Thank in you. our service when we have the opportunity to share our gifts of love. We bless the gifts we hold in our hands by affirming together the activity of spirit through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. The core value we celebrate for the month of May is abundance. As grateful channels for the free flow of God's love, there is always more than enough for us to, to be, to have, and to give. Our prayer champions continue to be active. Whether you have a joy to multiply or a sorrow to divide, our prayer chaplains join you in prayer. If you have a desire to speak to, with a chaplain, please contact Karen in the office. Reverend Sandy is also available for prayer support. Please email ULV at ULV, unityLV at rcn.com to schedule a call. You can also call 1-800-NOW-PRAY to reach a prayer partner of Silent Unity. Our gratitudes for today. Thank you to Charlie for his uplifting message and music this morning. It's always great to hear him. Thank you to Jen Hurtwig for being the platform assistant last week. And also, thank you to Joe Seeger for inspiring all us with her song, Somewhere Only We Know, last Sunday. Wow, beautiful. That's what it says. Also, thank you, for Joe, thank you to Joe for helping out with our opening song on voice and tambourine. Thank you to Denise Sumo for signing our peace Sunday, last Sunday. Peace song last Sunday. Yeah, that's okay. Typo. If you are grateful for something about ULV or have something to celebrate and you'd like to see it in the weekly email, just send a note to the office by Tuesday of each week. Unity of Lehigh Valley continues to incur routine bills. Your continued gifts assure the ongoing work that we do and maintaining our building. There is a donate button on, on the top navigation bar of our website where you can pay through PayPal, mail, mail a check directly to ULV, or set up a weekly or monthly payment from your bank. Please contact the office if you have questions on how to get your donation to the church. Even though we are open to the public without reservations for our services on Sundays, we are still inviting congregates to record themselves on their phone reading the Daily Word, since not everyone is able to gather with us in the sanctuary. So we need people to sign up. So sign up, people. Please contact the office at unitylv at rcn.com if you would like to participate. Details are also in our weekly email. Please contact Karen in the office to be placed on the schedule. If you do not receive the daily word, Karen will send you the text for that day. Please join us next Sunday as we welcome back Reverend Sandra Haas. Our office administrator, Karen Esbenson, will be having surgery on May 14th. Please keep her in your prayers for a quick recovery. The office will be closed as of May 14th and re will reopen on May 25th. All messages will be answered at that time. We are in the midst of seeking our new permanent senior minister. Let's join together to affirm our right and perfect minister will appear to us easily. Filled with the spirit of divine love and wisdom, we are guided and directed in our thoughts, our words, and our actions as we move towards the employment of the right minister for the highest good of this ministry. And so it is. Thank you, God. Yes. All right. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. And now it's time for our peace song. And as you heard Charlie talk about, it says, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Are you a part of that peace? Sending out that peace, sending joy and peace to others, comfort and appreciation. And we just gonna take a moment to bring ourselves together. We ask you to join with us virtually if you can. Just kind of reach out and join us as we sing our peace song. That was meant to be with God. 
of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. May peace prevail in the hearts and minds of all beings. And so it is. Amen. Namaste.